To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. Everyone in the state of Ohio is under a stay-at-home order at this time. It is not a suggestion. Department. The it federal government an says another 3.2 million Americans filed unemployment claims last week. That's more than 33 million Americans making those claims over just the last Cars seven Cars lining weeks. up for miles in every direction Tuesday, up and down East 152nd Street in Waterloo, trying to reach the Cleveland Department Food Bank. Department of Health and Human Services report this week echoes urgent calls from hospitals for more supplies. One administrator cited a three to six month what delay for the essential COVID items. What the COVID-19 Rapid Response Fund say? There is so much good work being done in all of our local communities, and it's all behind the scenes. The need is so deep and so vast. What came together is the Greater Cleveland COVID-19 Rapid Response Fund. And just like its name implies, this is a coordinated um, philanthropic response to the COVID emergency in our community. In philanthropy, we're known for asking others to convene and to collaborate. We're not always known to, to do it so well ourselves. And so we were nervous in the beginning. There are several foundations i would say many foundations in cleveland we're, we're so blessed that many of us work really well together everybody wants to help the question is do they have enough vehicles to help and this is one of those vehicles well there's there's definitely hard choices you know we've got different um uh, special needs groups that apply or different homeless groups that apply or different youth groups that apply and who is more deserving right it's been hard to not feel like we could respond in real time to every need that was presented. Um, you know, we're doing the best we can as fast as we can, but the need is big. We've deployed um, nearly $3 million in the past six or so weeks, five to six weeks, um, which has been an extraordinary undertaking. Um, Foundations are not known to be nimble. They're not known to move resources very quickly. We are giving out grants weekly because this is an unprecedented crisis. So we can't say we're gonna take a month or two months or three months to get back to you. People need the money now. So the fund has been um, deploying resources very quickly to community-based nonprofit organizations that are providing for people's basic human needs. What we can do is help with food bank and food distribution and PPE, personal protection equipment, things that really, we're trying really hard in these first few weeks to help the state flatten the curve. So one of our biggest grants has been to the Greater Cleveland Food Bank. Over two thirds of the people coming to the food bank's distribution points were new to their system. So they'd never come through the food bank system before but we're living sort of so close to the edge that when this level of crisis hit, it just really exploded the need. We see, of course, rightfully so, that as the county and other actors collect personal protective equipment in the state, it goes to frontline workers, it goes to people in hospitals, it goes to healthcare workers as it must. But there are also other people that are on the front lines who are at extremely high risk of contracting COVID-19 who are not really captured by those distributions of PPE. We were finding almost two dozen providers around town that care for thousands of disabled Greater Clevelanders on a daily basis, providing intimate personal care, feeding, bathing, clothing, um, without the kind of personal protective equipment that they needed. And so it became a very high priority of the COVID Rapid Response Fund to try and meet the need around this very specific disability-related population. Literally within 24 hours, we purchased $100,000 worth of PPE and got it to all of the residential IDD providers in the community. And that was a really powerful moment for me. And frankly, one that I is going to change the way I do business uh, at the foundation for some time. We knew philanthropy would be, what we used to say was a drop in the bucket, but now we say a drop in the ocean. If there were anything that I could hope for for philanthropy is that it would focus on advocacy, that it would focus on policy, that it would recognize this moment as an incredible inflection point in all of our work and invest there, invest in really shaping how, how society is structured. We have to partner with the state and the county and the feds because their money is, dwarfs our money always, but especially now.
philanthropy is sort of a third rail. Philanthropy really historically has operated as a solve for government failures and market failures. And we do best when we're operating at the margins. Now, you know, this is unprecedented for philanthropy too, right? Because we're used to seeing an end. We can't expect to spend $8 million over 12 months. We need to spend $8 million in three months. Regrettably, I suspect that it, given the current market, um, given that every dollar we put out in the community because the markets are down is an expensive dollar, that foundations may in some ways be even more close to the vest, even more focusing on just the people in their sphere. Um, I hope that's not the case, but I, sus I suspect it will be.